There are many things uh, to look after to run a modern Formula One car, from mechanical setups, electronic setups, and all performance issues. And well, as you know, there are several engineers dedicated to the car, and particularly to the race engineer, race performance engineer. We share all the tasks uh, between us. Um, in my case, performance engineer means that I look at all aspects that have to do with extracting the maximum performance of the car and also tuning the car to uh, suit the driver and his driving style. So in a sense, I got kind of a, what I like in my job is that I just dedicate all my effort to that, data analysis simulation to get the maximum performance, whereas all the kind of legality issues and make sure that the car is built properly, etc., is more responsibility of the race engineer. So that's how we normally share the tasks. I think, first of all, you need to be very calm because there is a lot going on and you have to be very, very focused. You know, make sure that you're very disciplined. You don't have a chance to make mistakes. Uh, sometimes, especially in qualifying, obviously, as you know, to give you an example, the cars are in part for me. It means you can't do any modification to the car mechanical setups, but you can still download different electronic setups. So sometimes you go just one minute, the driver comes back and says, oh, in this corner I have a problem with traction control. So you have to type different numbers and put them in the car. And it sounds trivial, but when you are under a lot of pressure, it's very easy to make a mistake. And if I type 2 instead of 0.2, I can completely ruin his chances. So, you know, that, it's that kind of uh, pressure because you're not allowed a mistake, obviously. It's very important, obviously, um, because the data do not tell you 100% what the car does. If you have a good driver who works very closely with the engineers, who can give you a clear description of what he feels about the car, how he perceives the car, and you can easily understand what he needs to go faster is a great advantage. And actually, I think, you know, in my part of the team with Mark Weber and um, our race engineer, we have a very good communication and a very good understanding normally of what Mark needs to go fast. And I think you know, this is probably the best year I've had so far with respect to being able to communicate properly with the driver. The communication is of monumental importance. Um, I can see now, uh, having been in the same team now for nearly two years here, we are really beginning to work together properly because you've been in the garage when you know, the sessions are running and you see that you know, people sometimes don't really talk to each other, you just look at each other and you make a gesture and they understand what they need to do or they understand they need to wait for you because you are still doing something and you know you've got 10 or 15 mechanics around the car, five engineers in total and you know we are linked with radios etc but it takes a while to really know what to expect from each other and how to work in perfect synchrony. You know it's like an orchestra, if you've got six violins each playing on his own it doesn't come out very good, but uh, after one and a half year, now we are a reasonably good orchestra, I would say. Um, well, Mark is 100% focused on the car, his job, performance, and he's very keen on dedicate as much time as necessary to his engineers. So he spends a lot of time, starting from Thursday, with Kyron, the race engineer, myself, going through all the aspects and like, you know, from the detail of remembering that in corner eight in Silverstone, you know that braking, you had this problem, can you look at last year and make sure we got these kind of settings, blah, 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 to the general planning of the weekend and, you know, run plans and all the stuff which is more responsible to the race engineer. So, and, you know, starts on Thursday and then you do the sessions and after the session there is normally the debrief where you go through each best, each of the best laps, each of the corners, and they will tell us the car is behaving so and so here, and what can we do, what we cannot do, etc, etc, so. Um, the data analysis side is 95% of my job, obviously, so you're absolutely right with that. Um, it's not very difficult. It takes a lot of practice. The thing is, modern Formula One cars, you measure everything you can in terms of forces, displacement, everything. So you can reconstruct what the car was doing in every corner quite with high fidelity. However, you have to find an answer normally in two minutes. 
So that is the reason why we spend a lot of time actually preparing data analysis packages where you've got already certain pre-calculation, a number of statistics, and a number of layouts where you can capture the basic things that you need, especially while the car is running, to know, well, the car is running, I can see that he has a problem when he brakes and goes into the corner. I've done this now for a few years, and I can recognize the pattern in the way the driver is steering and braking and how the car is using the tires, etc. So normally, but not always, as the car is running, we have a reasonable picture of how it is behaving. And when the driver comes back and it tells you through the problems he has been experiencing, you should have already a decent idea. And if you've done a proper job and you have a good driver, normally what he says confirms what you've seen. I wish it was always like that. Well, generally, you know, it's not only about the weekend because we go to the same racing circuits every year and we've got data from previous seasons. So you've already got an idea of what problems you could face in a particular circuit and also um, how you solved those problems in the past. Um, normally, within the two sessions on Fridays, you approach them with a little plan on if this happens, we're going to change that. You know, there's kind of a what if a scenario which goes on before you even start doing one lap. Um, so again, when things evolve as you planned, it's very quick to do the right change and to make an improvement in every session. Again, you also try something different occasionally, which leads to the wrong path, and then you have to make a U-turn and go back to where you started from. So, as I say, if it was absolutely 100% clear from the data and from the simulation where to go, it wouldn't even be as much fun, because you know part of the fun is the improvisation and to be able to understand driver data simulation and put everything together in a proper plan and a proper change. Back-to-back -back races are obviously more exhausting than the normal ones, but um, if you neglect the fact that we just have to work for three weekends in a row before we can have a weekend off, it's not too bad. It's more the team as a whole which is put under stress because obviously the cars have to have a quick turnaround and, for instance, now the cars have come from France and they go straight to Silverstone for the next race and the mechanics are under a tighter schedule. And normally, when you have back-to-back -back races, you have less of a chance to introduce modification or to solve problems. So, the back-to-back -back race is a big issue if you have been experiencing reliability problems or mechanical problems. If it is normal routine, it's not that big a problem because, you know, we finish one race on Sunday, we have already used our little spare time in France to do the preparation for setup and gearbox and controls for Silverstone. So I, my workload is not higher than normal. It's just that I don't have a weekend in the middle to go out. <laughs> when we come back from the races, the first thing to do is to look back at all the data, all that has happened in terms of performance, how the car performed, the driver performed, how the race went in terms of strategy. So each group has to do his own homework and look back and try to learn from mistakes so how we could possibly improve what we did. Uh, in my case, being a race performance engineer, I go through the data and look at how the car balance was, how the performance was, and what we could have done to possibly make it better, and I advise the race engineer about what I find. Then there is all the um, aspect of mechanical reliability and everything, because obviously racing cars are prototypes. So, you know, every time you run new parts, which undergo a certain amount of validation, but unfortunately, there is always a degree of unreliability and possible failure during races or during the race weekend. So, uh, another part of the engineering team, although even us, we are involved a little bit as well, we have to look at failures, what caused it, was it the way we operated the car, was it something which was unforeseen before, and we put together all the information and this is passed to the design office and they have to solve these problems. Now obviously there are the so-called showstoppers, which are failures that cause you to break down and stop along the circuit and compromise your race. And obviously there is a high degree of pressure on design people, design office to, to solve this problem as quick as possible. The briefings most of the times uh, include all the uh, engineering personnel which means you've got a representative for, obviously, you've got race engineer, performance engineer, electronics and control systems, 
engine, uh, car systems, just the pure electronics and sensors, etc. Um, you have obviously all the chief technical officer from, you know, chief race engineer, technical director, etc., etc. We also have some engineers, normally factory based from R&D, who come to the races more or less on a regular basis to support us with additional analysis and information. So there is sort of a kind of a think tank organization where, you know, we sit down, in a briefing we go through uh, the plans, the changes from the previous event, and how we're going to, you know, approach the, the race in terms of planning the runs and the setup changes and what we want to do. As I said before, you know, there's a lot of experience from previously visiting a venue and we try to make the most out of it. And also we've got testing in between events, again, you know, with useful information we can use. Uh, that's normally a briefing, which happens on Thursday, Friday morning, Saturday morning and Sunday before the race. Before the race, the biggest discussion is race strategy also. Um, fuel, when the car stops, etc. etc. Um, debriefing, after sessions have happened, uh, the same group of people sit down, obviously with the drivers, in briefing as well. And we go through the sessions, what problems we had, how the car performed, what the drivers need to go faster, and if there was any reliability issue, how we're going to approach them and try to solve them before they hit back.